In this video, we're going to be doing parking brakes in this 2005 Honda Element. We're going to remove the rear wheel. It's going to be a 19 millimeter. Go ahead and take off the lug nuts now. We're going to remove our caliper now. With our rear calipers, typically what we'll do is take them and swing them up over or rest them back here somewhere. In the fronts, you want to put a hanger on them. You can hang the backs if you want to, but we're going to take this off and rest it somewhere where we're not putting stress on the brake hose. To take off our caliper, it's going to be two 14 millimeter bolts. Take those out. Now, if you're trying to take these bolts out and you see that this inside nut here is spinning, you're going to want to go ahead and back that nut while you release and remove the two front bolts here. In our case, it's not spinning. So just take these two bolts right out. And then we can take our caliper, rest it right there. The next thing we're going to do is remove our brake pads. Sometimes you'll need to come in and push them out. In this case, they just came right out. And then from here, we're going to remove our caliper bracket. These are going to be 14 as well. So we may need to, and we will actually just move our caliper out of the way while we take out the bracket. We can remove our bracket and set that aside. So on this vehicle, you should have two Phillips head screws right here holding your rotor to the actual hub itself. Our vehicle doesn't have these Phillips screws in here, but this is when you would take them out. You should also have a rubber grommet right here, which is a plug for access to your adjuster for your parking shoes. We don't have these. We're just going to take our rotor right off. Sometimes you'll need to give it a good tap, maybe a rotate and a tap to work it off, but it should slide right off. And then you have access to your parking brake shoes. To remove our parking shoes, we're going to have to remove the springs and hardware holding it in place. We're going to start with a long pair of needle nose pliers and we're going to remove some of those top springs. 
Removing one will start to relieve tension in the entire system. So we'll start up top here with a long pair, Let's compress that spring, and pop it off. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So what we're doing is we're using this arm here and compressing the spring up to the arm. The goal here is not to grab the spring on this side, but just that, that metal tab. Push the spring in. What you may want to have handy is a hook tool of some sort to help that spring come off of that metal tab. To ensure it doesn't fly around the room, I'm just going to grab it and remove it the rest of the way with the pliers. So what we're going to do now is release these two pins. There's a front and a back. All right. The pins are pushed through from the back and they're twisted and locked into these clips. So what we're gonna do is grab a pair of needle nose pliers and see if we can just spin those pins. To unlock them. And then go ahead and grab that clip. do the same thing on the other side. So again we're going to grab that pin and spin it. I'll go and take that clip out. And now you can either do one of two things. You can leave these silver pins in here, or you can push it straight back. Reach around the back here. You should be able to feel it. And pull it out. At this point, you've released the springs up top, which means the top is free. You've also released those pins, which means that the shoes are free to float forward and backwards and open up. So at this point, you can actually just start opening up and removing your parking brakes. Okay. So now what we have is our adjuster, our spring, and our strut and spring here. So we're going to start to separate these pieces and put them aside. Here's your adjuster. Here's your adjuster wheel. Here's your strut. Your spring to hold your strut. And on the bottom, the hook on this green spring is really small, so just take your time, spin it around. There's one shoe. There's your spring. Now your other shoe, you'll notice this cable going to it. This is your parking brake cable. It's connected to either your parking brake handle or your parking brake pedal. To remove this, we're going to compress, we're going to push against that spring and compress that spring. And then pull the end of this out. Now sometimes it's a little easier done with the tool. Go ahead and grab the end. 
push your shoes into the spring and then work that end right out. Now if you're replacing your shoes, you're more than likely going to need to replace this piece onto your shoes as well. So this gets disassembled as well. So this is easier done on a bench or flat so you can hold some or all of it down. Take a pair of needle nose pliers and push this horseshoe clamp right off. Sometimes it'll run around on you but just it will come off. And if you do have new brake hardware, do what you have to do to get this off. It's okay if you ruin it as long as you have a replacement. There's your clip. So then you can remove your washer. Now your arm here should be separate from your shoe, which means you can just pull your arm right up and off and that pin comes right out. So we're going to start with our pin here. I'm going to put our pin up to the bottom of the shoe. One finger, we're going to hold it in place. We're going to put our arm on top. We're going to take your washer and you're going to put it down just like this. And you're going to take your horseshoe clip. So go ahead and put our horseshoe clip on. And you'll see that there's no way that would stay on there by itself just like that. So we'll have to squeeze these two ends together. Once you have them squeezed together, give it an operation a couple of times, open and close, make sure it's, it's working. And to be on the safe side, we'll just give this a little push in make sure it's seated all the way inside that notch where it slides into. Everything looks good here. And we can bring it to the vehicle and start reinstalling. So now with this arm here attached, what we're going to do is hold on to it like this. We're going to take our parking brake cable. And we're going to compress this spring as much as we can. Now, sometimes you can do it by hand. Sometimes you need a pair of pliers. What I like to do is compress that spring as much as I can by hand to get my tool in there. Press with the tool and then grip it so it locks it backwards. All right, so our shoes went on like this, which means this cable is going to go in just like that. Once we're in place, go ahead and let go of the spring and then that's together. So now we have our parking brake cable onto our parking brake shoe. And you see this round notch here is going to go up top, right here. There will be a spring holding it in place and a spring on the bottom. But for right now, there's nothing holding it in place. So what we're going to do is put the pins through the backing plate, through the shoe, and that will hold our shoe in place. What the pins consist of are these pieces here. It's going to go through the backing plate, through the shoe, into the pin here, and you're going to twist to lock it. You will have to compress this to get this all the way through. So we'll go ahead and do that now. It will take a little bit of effort. It's not going to be very easy, but it is doable. So what I like to do is get a visual on that. Push it back, put it through the shoe, put it through the shoe, and now what we have to do is get this clip on that pin and get it locked down. Sounds easy. So if you hold the pin from the back, you also have to hold your shoe push this clip over and then twist the pin.
So now we're going to do the cross piece that goes between the two, also known as the strut and the spring. The spring, the rounded end is going to go through here. The flat end is going to go through the shoe on the inside here. So what you can do is rotate the axle to give you a little bit more visual. We're going to take our spring. We're going to hold it like this. We're going to take the flat end of the spring and go right into this hole right here. So it's going to lock in by pulling against that flat side of the spring. So it's going to go in and turn it forward. Then what we can do is take our strut and the round end of the spring is going to go through here. This notch is going to go through this notch here on that shoe. So you may have to wiggle this a little bit to get it to seat in because of that arm that's connected to the parking brake cable. So we'll take our needle nose pliers, lift this up, put our strut into place, and then we'll stretch our spring onto that strut. One way or another, you're going to have to stretch these springs into place. So you're either going to stretch it onto the strut or onto the shoe. Just like that. So next we're going to take our black springs and we're going to put them between our shoe and this post here. On our shoe, this is where the, the pin is. We're going to take the spring and put it up here. All right, there's the same notches on both shoe, so we're going to put it up into here. So we'll take our needle nose, just help get that spring into position on the shoe side. And we'll just stretch it the best we can forward onto that post. Now sometimes a, a pick tool is a better option here. Whatever works for you. All right. Now that is where you want it. So now if we come down our shoe, we'll see where our green spring is going to go. And this spring, once we're completed, is going to sit in front of our adjuster. So our spring is going to go through this opening and twist on this shoe here. So we're going to push it through that opening and twist. And then once we're ready, we'll bring it over and connect it to the other shoe. For now, just put this up in here to rest. Now we'll put the other shoe on. So now here's our forward shoe. We're going to put that up into place. Now we have our strut in the middle here. We have to make sure that this notch lines up with our strut. Like that. Once you're lined up with this strut, just make sure that this curved part of your shoe lines up up here and seats in nicely. There should be no gap there. It should be nice and tight up here and it should fit inside this lip on both sides. So your adjuster is going to go in here between the two shoes. So we'll turn the axle here so you can see and give me a little bit more access right here. So once your adjuster is in place you can squeeze your shoes together to hold that adjuster in, like that. All right, and you'll make adjustments to open or close your shoes with that wheel in the center. 
we're going to work on the pins and the clips to hold our shoe in place. So we'll come in from the back with the pin. So this side on the pin in the back is a little bit more difficult to get to and feed it through. So once you have it through, make sure you keep a finger on it to hold it. And we're going to take our clip, rotate the axle, give us a little bit more room. I take our clip, put it over our pin. We're going to line the clip and the pin up so that the pin will fit through that clip. So we're going to open the pliers just a little bit. The goal here is to push that clip, grab the pin, and twist it. There you go. So now that we have our adjuster in place and our two clips holding our shoes in place, we can now move on to this spring. It's a little bit easier when your shoes are locked down. So we're going to take our spring and I'll move this so you can get a better view. I'm going to take our spring, put it right into this little notch here. Okay, there's that spring. And that spring will sit just like this, right across your adjuster. When you come in to make your adjustment through your rotor, you'll come in right about here onto that wheel. So your spring on the front side is going to go into a little triangle notch right here, just like we did on the other side. And it's going to get stretched over this tab here. So we'll start in that little triangle notch, pull it up and over this tab here. All your springs and all your clips are in place. What I like to do here is just grab the shoes, put a little pressure inwards, squeeze them, and just rock it a little bit back and forth. And then give it a little stretch out. And that'll give you an idea if everything is in place. Sometimes you'll hear things click into place. You want to make sure you're inside this rib here. You see this lip. You want to make sure everything's inside there. This side here is rotted away, so we have no real gauge here. But we look good here, everything looks tight. Should be all set now to put our rotor on and then start to adjust our outward tension on our parking brakes and then put our wheel on, give it a final test, we're all done. So now we're gonna put on our rotor. You'll notice you have a couple of places here to put some screws. You also have the matching locations on your rotor. You have a couple matching locations, but these line up with our hub. So we're going to put this on. If you've put your shoes on and they're not too far open, your rotor should slide on. If your rotor is getting caught on something, it's probably the shoes up against the inside here. You'll need to get back in there and adjust them closed so you can get your rotor on. What you want to do, put your rotor on, put your two Phillips screws in here, which our car didn't come with them. We do have one Ideally, you're going to put both screws back in here. So we're just going to do the one that we have for now, just to hold the rotor tight to the hub. Once the rotor is tight to the hub, what we're going to do is spin this hole here till it lines up with our adjuster. And once we're lined up with our adjuster, we're going to come in with the flat blade screwdriver and we're going to hit the notches on that wheel of our adjuster to open our shoes till they just make contact with our rotor. You want to just make contact and then back in slightly. What you ultimately want is to adjust your shoes to the point where when you put your tire back on and give it one spin, it has a spin and a half rotation. 
and that's when it stops. Then you know your parking brake shoes are adjusted perfectly. So we'll go ahead and make the adjustment now until we hear a little contact. And then we'll back off slightly. Once you feel like you've gotten it just about right, put your tire on, give it a spin, look for the one and a half rotations, and then you're good to go. You can put your caliper back on, your brake pads, put everything back on. And then what we suggest is you move over to the other side and adjust the same way. Make sure you get the same one and a half rotations and you're done. So now that our rotor's on and our parking brakes are adjusted, we can start to reassemble our caliper. So first thing is gonna be our caliper bracket. and our two 14 millimeter bolts. We'll snug these up and we'll come back and torque them down. We're going to torque these to 41 foot-pounds. So now with our caliper bracket installed, we can move on to our caliper. Now because we didn't do any brake pad replacement, the piston on our caliper should be out as far as we need it to be out. It shouldn't be any further out. We're not replacing old pads with new pads, taking up more space. So we should be able to just put our piston right back onto our brake pads as they were. So the first thing we're going to do is take our brake pads with the wear indicator on the inside bottom. Drop them into position, outside one. And now our caliper. Make sure your brake hose isn't twisted. And slide your caliper into position. If you do need to, for some reason, push your caliper back in, now would be the time. Use a caliper press tool or whatever you need to do, a uh, pair of C-clamps, whatever you need to do to press that piston back in, do that now. But it should just go back on. And then we can put in our two caliper bolts. Now, on this vehicle, there's a metal bracket here, putting a little bit of spring tension outwards. So we're just going to have to push that bracket here to line up the bottom bolt. And we'll snug these up. Again, 14 millimeters on these also. Now we're going to torque down our caliper bolts here. If you happen to torque these down and you see this inner nut here spinning, you can back that up with a 17 millimeter to stop that from spinning. 
Now ours doesn't spin, so we're just going to go ahead and torque it down. It's going to be 16 foot-pounds. So when I do a wheel, I like to put on top and bottom lug nut, rock back and forth, continue to tighten them down by hand. It just helps you get it nice and flat against the rotor. Give it a look, looks good. We're going to snug these up in a crisscross pattern. And then we'll lower it down, put the tire on the ground, and torque them down. So now that we've lowered the vehicle down, our tire's on the ground, we're going to go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 79 foot-pounds. We're going to do it in a crisscross pattern. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.